Hello everybody, Game Freak 9917 here, and I am back today with more Forza Horizon 2 on the Xbox One, and I'm bringing you another car review, and this is my third time trying to do this, because the first time I tried doing it, the UPS guy showed up, so I had to stop the recording and just scratch it, because I can't cut any of this out for some reason. El Gato won't let me do that in the software, even though it says that I can. And then the second time, the software was just on the fritz and messing up. But anyway... Uh, I'm bringing you another review today, and today, this review, uh, I've been kind of trying to hold off on this one for the, as long as I could, and I'll get into that at the end of the video, but anyway, today I'm going to be reviewing the 2012 Nissan GTR Black Edition, and this is one of my all-time favorite supercars, with Lamborghinis and Ferraris included. And I'm not saying it's my absolute favorite, you know, one of my absolute favorite supercars would probably have to be like the Aventador, but I just love this car because it's a sort of cheaper supercar that people will actually want to throw upgrades on. You know, somebody buys a Lamborghini, they're not always going to upgrade it, they're not going to throw a bigger turbo, upgrade the internals of the engine or anything like that. They're just, they're just going to leave it stock because they rarely drive it. But that's the nice thing about the GTR. It's a supercar that people actually want to drive because it's a little bit cheaper than like an Aventador or a Huayra 458 or anything like that. But it's still a supercar. And one of the cool things about it though is it's a Nissan at that. And when you think Nissan, you don't think GTR. You know? But... Anyway, it's still a really cool, uh, really cool car, and I love it. But anyway, the 2012 Black Edition has a 3.8 liter twin turbocharged V6, which is capable of producing 542 horsepower and 446 or 466 foot-pound torque, and it's a little bit on the heavy side. Weighing 3,887 pounds, but that's because all-wheel drive, fairly heavy body, you know, a little bit bulky even. But still, it should be able to go fairly quick because there's so much engineering genius that just went into the making of this car. But anyway, let's just go ahead and buy it and I'll just keep talking about it. But each uh, car is hand-built. There's no one engine really that's the exact same they're all put together made assembled by hand and that's something that i love about this car is just all that attention to detail and oh man i love this uh little gray right here and i'm going to go with that but it's all this attention to detail that they put into this car which is something that i really love it shows that there's so much passion and heart that really goes into this car but it's also very good looking, I must say. I love the looks of the GTR. But let's not try to spoil the sound of the engine too much here. Alright, see just what this twin turbo V6 sounds like. Ooh. Ooh, I like this. A very nice aggressive sound in those turbos. They don't sound like you don't hear the blow off valve or anything like that, but you can just hear nothing but the suction of the turbos very cool interior and also it's a very technical kind of car as well you know with the uh, dash and everything that they have uh, going on very uh, considerate about being a very high performance vehicle well, anyway let's go ahead and see how it handles Wow, very good brakes at least. Very good around the uh, corner there. 
you know, all wheel drive. We're not going to have a whole bunch of drama. Hard on throttle around the corner. And second gear onto the gravel. Very good grip. Handling those corners very well. Ooh, come on, Mercedes. Full throttle, second gear going around the corner. And it's just nothing but grip, and I love it. There are some cars that are all wheel drive, but the back end can still escape you when you're going around the corner if you're not careful enough. But I think it's because of how heavy this car actually is. It's able to maintain that a lot better. Look, that was just a bad uh, corner there by me. Hard grip, just a very hard launch actually. Pass up with four five eight, but he's probably just turning off back there. But yeah, very hard uh, launch there. And. 188.54 across the line. Let me write that down real quick. 188.54. Let's see what the uh, last actual supercar was that we reviewed. I guess uh, we could compare it to the uh, the 2012 Porsche 911 GT3 RS. That did a 178.33. Uh, it's actually pretty much on par with a Lamborghini Murcielago SV. The that did a 188.05. So GTR just like a half second faster than a Lamborghini Murcielago. But let's head back to the garage now and just see what our upgrades are and how fast we can make this car go. Nope, I keep accidentally hitting that. Our conversions, we only have a drivetrain swap, which is a rear wheel drive. Not interested in doing that. But let's uh, max out this engine as much as we can. This car makes a 1.0 lateral G stock, which is pretty good. Thanks to that all wheel drive system, and I'm pretty sure this has. This probably has like sport tires on it. I don't know if this will have uh, race tires come stock man just imagine what a uh, 6 liter V12 would, in this car would be like be pretty quick alright so it looks like we're going to be hitting around 800 kind of mark Never mind. Big boost from the twin turbos. And I'm I'm gonna be fair, I haven't driven my fully upgraded GTR in such a long time because of reasons. So uh, I totally forgot a lot about this car. But one thousand and seventeen horsepower fully upgraded. Now let's see the torque, eight hundred and thirty foot pound torque. Pretty good. And we can upgrade the already good brakes. Pretty much going to need it for all that power plus that weight. We're probably just going to go with full weight reduction here because of how heavy the car actually is. So 
3,211 pounds now with all that put on and all that taken off. Transmission. Uh, I guess we'll do the sport trans because I've been doing that with everything else, but we cannot upgrade the differential clutch or drive line. Yes, and we could put race compound 1.1 G's. And looks like that's going to be it. 285s up front, 315s in the back. Fairly wide tires. Let's take a look at our aero and appearance. A splitter and a wing. Not really interested in either. But anyway, let's go ahead and take it to the airfield and see how fast it goes. And then I can get into this uh, this car. Doesn't sound all that much different, except for the turbos. Those turbos are making themselves a little bit more known. Ooh, wow, this car is super quick. And those awesome brakes, I love it. Ooh, able to get that back end out there around that corner, but still very well managed. Back end is kicking out just a little bit there in third gear, coming onto the gravel. Whoa, brakes! Yeah, I can feel that back end wanting to escape a little bit when I go around the corner hard on throttle. Or where I sort of feather the throttle, but I hit it hard. I'm pretty sure all of the other GTR people uh, that are watching this video and they've bought this car and they see what it is like for the upgrade I think they know why this car is sort of uh, disappoints me a little bit but I'm just going to uh, get into that when we're done here alright let's go hard uh, or hard launch I mean very short uh, first gear You know, it tops out around like 41 miles an hour when my uh, old ass Ford Escort does like a uh, tops out around like 51, I think. And a 219.10. And now I can. Well, here. Come on, Pen. Drown out a little bit. Well, now I can get into this car. That right there is why I'm a little bit more disappointed in this car, because not everybody out there can tune their car. And this is basically, it forces you to tune your car, which I can appreciate that they do that, because they're like, you know, we have this feature here, you should definitely take advantage of it, it'll really help your car out. And also, this car has a little bit shorter gears and not high top speed because it's built for dominating a track. It's not built for, you know, stretching this thing out uh, on like a highway and just for insane top speed. It's actually made more for um, a track. And this thing uh, even beat a few other uh, really good cars for the Nurburgring's uh, lap time in real life. But it's just, it's really frustrating though because not everybody out there can properly tune a car. 
And even I can't. Like, here, I'll show you what I basically do to my cars. Or, no, not my cars. Tune. This is basically all I do to make my car... Oh, oh yeah, I can only do the final drive. But this is basically what I do to make this car go faster. I only upgrade the final uh, drive. And that's it. And... Now... Now watch. Like, that's basically it for me. Like, I, I'm not the type of person that can actually go into each individual gear and push everything out the most I can. But, you know what, fuck it. We're just gonna line this bastard up and let it rip. Just to show you guys what it's like now. You see, first gear is reaching around. It probably could have gone to, like, 58 miles an hour on first gear. But yeah, as you can see, because I went in there and I did that, this car is able to go a whole lot faster, 239.84, but I'm not even going to bother writing that down because these aren't supposed to involve the tunes. But, uh, you know, I guess now that I actually see it from a more proper perspective, I can understand why. Uh, they made it so you pretty much had to go in and tune the car because they added that feature into this car because so many people wanted it in the first game so they gave it to the people and you know what's a really good way to make sure that people actually use the product basically make them have like put cars in there where people actually do have to go in and use the tuning program and, you know, more people actually start using it. But, like I keep saying though, not everybody can actually do that. And it's kind of frustrating though, because I definitely am not good at tuning. And, you know, I buy this car thinking it's going to be awesome. You know, they're going to take off the 230 mile an hour cap that they had in the first Forza Horizon. And, you know, just stock. But then I find out that this car, fully upgraded with no tune, does worse than the previous game's version. Which doesn't really make much sense to me. You know, they could have still done, like, the 230 cap on it. You know, I just don't really understand why they had to... Uh, uh, force it to have a... One or a 219 cap, but based, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dive into this anymore. I've been really stretching this out a lot longer than I had to. But my overall thoughts on this car, it's a awesome, awesome car. You know, I say that this car disappoints me, but that's only because I was more disappointed that they put a 219 mile an hour cap on it and basically forced you to use the tuning program. But that's not really the car's fault, though. And, you know, it's, it is fairly simple to actually do, you know, you can do what I did and just did the final drive. And that's basically all I do to my cars, unless if I have an off-road vehicle where the suspension is too uh, spongy or whatever, then I know that I need to upgrade the stiffness. But my overall rating on this car, it... I would, I'll give it a 10 out of 10. Yeah, I'll give it a 10 out of 10, respectively. Because even though it doesn't have a high top speed, super quick acceleration, awesome grip and turning, and very good brakes, even though I'm over here just definitely fucking doing nothing to prove my point on that. But, you know, you take this on a track, you're more careful with it. That's basically all I can say. I'm just out here trying to whip it around and whatnot. But, yeah, this car, it is definitely an awesome track car, especially for just 90 grand. So I would, I would definitely recommend it. I'll give it a 10 out of 10. But my main, like, I guess my gripe with this car is just turn 10 made it, so you had to use the tuning. That's basically my only thing with this car. 
But anyway, I would like to thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comment section down below or just give the video a thumbs up. If you want to see more content from me and my friends and I record with them, make sure to hit the subscribe button. I'll be uploading daily. And let me know what you guys uh, want me to review in the next video in the comment section down below. I'll be making sure to uh, check out those comments and whatnot. Just, I'm still waiting on you guys though. But anyway, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching again, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.